To the next segment of the Big Bang, the uh, Big Bang Theory Alice BTS vlog. This is the uh, first segment of the uh, 81st episode. Uh, yeah, so uh, the 79th episode just went out. Uh, the 80th is, hasn't gone to the editing bay yet. It's still within the camera here. Uh, I'm a little behind on that. So, anyways, let me give you a time and date stamp. It is. 22 hours and uh, 54 minutes, or probably now 55 minutes, into the day of Wednesday, August 24th, 2016. Yeah, uh, I was supposed to uh, go to church today. That's why I was supposed to get up at 7 and, and uh, go to church, but uh, that didn't end up happening. I ended up not feeling that well, so uh, I think a lot of it had to do with simply the uh, body fatigue, so I ended up staying in bed an extra, not extra hour. Uh, and then I ended up going food shopping around 8 o'clock, 8.30. Uh, by that time, it was dark, and uh, it's hard to film uh, by streetlight. I haven't actually tried that out yet to see if I can actually film by streetlight and do a peripatetics as I'm, doing, as I'm, as I'm uh, walking at night. So, in terms of doing food shopping. But, uh, of course, it's, 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 it's going... <laughs> at night, has its, has its dangers. You think, oh, yeah, you might get hit by a car. Well... The uh, car is not necessarily cars aren't necessarily the danger. The big danger in at night when you're uh, hiking like that or going food shopping and this is one of the same thing for me are skunks. Um, last night I almost ran into a skunk uh, when I was sitting outside. A skunk came over, just sort of sniffing around. Didn't really notice me until he noticed me. It was rather a close call. Uh, he was in within uh, basically just a couple feet, a couple a couple feet away from me. So uh, not even a meter. And the same thing happened today. I walked by a skunk, and uh, well, we both surprised each other. But unfortunately, the skunk didn't uh, turn around and raise his tail, which is the sign that he's going to spray. But uh, you know, <laughs> nonetheless, it was uh, a, a close enough call that it uh, was a cause for a bit of concern. Although, anyways, I am outside right now uh, doing my observation uh, from uh, on the. Well, it's time now for the war project to begin. Uh, from 10 p.m. till just about 2 o'clock in the morning, I'll be out here. And I'll also be getting uh, the next segment, uh, actually, just a little bit after this, I'm going to begin the or vlog. And the or vlog, the difference between the or vlog and the BTS vlog is going to be that in the or vlog, uh, I'm going to include uh, data that I'm not including in the BTS vlog. I have to go take a look at the or vlog in order to see some of the data, some of the, the uh, footage of the clouds. If you want to see that, then you're going to have to go to the or vlog. The or vlog will contain that stuff, will contain more of, and, and it will be specifically on the research project, and it, it will advance. The episodes will come out as the research progress progresses, as I have new materials to put out then the or vlog will come out so that will be in other words the pace of the or vlog will be dependent completely on the research project itself and where what type of progress we're making or even in some cases we're not making let's say we get stalled for a bit and uh, the project is not moving anywhere really because i'm stuck on something uh, you'll know that too but the thing is also you'll start seeing a lag in the vlogs uh, for the or vlog but it, you can see all this and more. All the, all the stuff will be on the uh, Cyborg Alpha TV network, the, both the YouTube channel and our uh, blog page. So you can go to either place and find our material. So in other words, it's going to be easier to find us than it would before. And again, with with uh, with uh, Blogspot, you don't have to sign up. There's nothing nothing to sign up for. You don't have to sign up. To, if you want to view our stuff and not uh, you know not subscribe, not give us a thumbs up, that's fine too. Um, you know. It's however you want to do it, and if you look at the uh, the YouTube uh, description down below, 
you'll see I'll I've changed, changed the description a bit, and I've got something now called a video index. That means you don't have to watch the whole vlog. You can watch the parts you think that might be interesting. You just click on uh, uh, the video index, click on the time, uh, uh, next to the uh, the description you think is interesting, and you go to that part there, watch that part, and if you want to continue watching, good. If not, then, you know, in other words, you watch what you want to watch in terms of the amount of what you want to watch in terms of our vlog, uh, in terms of this vlog, or even the the, the uh, or vlog, or any of the vlogs are all going to have the time index in there, so you don't have to sit and watch the entire thing. The thing is, you have to say you do want to watch the entire thing, but you can't do it all at once. Do it in bits and pieces, you know. Uh, however you want to watch it, it's up to you. Uh, I'm not going <laughs> to sort of sit down and go, you have to do this and you have to do that. Uh, uh, to do that is it's however you want to watch the vlog. So, anyways, uh, I'm going to leave this here for now. Uh, and I'll uh, see you... Uh, probably in a couple hours uh, let you know what's happening for tonight not much is happening uh, I, I, I thought there was gonna be a storm tonight that's what I had seen uh, uh, that's what I had seen on the satellite uh, from about uh, four o'clock in the afternoon there was a, there was a storm heading towards us uh, a large chunk of the storm was heading north of Toronto and there was a chunk heading south so we were getting hit with, with sort of imagine a barbell or, 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 or there's one clump up here one clump below and there's a connecting point part we were gonna get hit with a connecting part but uh, as of 10 o'clock when I got back uh, and came outside and I checked the satellite uh, that whole section is completely gone so the next thing I got to do is when I get back in is I got to start looking at uh, Louisiana and the Gulf Coast Gulf Coast states they're the ones who seem to be getting hit a lot with uh, these particular storm activities and, and a lot of these storm activities are is basically a um, uh, a interplay between the tropical systems and the polar system. So there, there is a system uh, and or systems up at the pole, and then there's systems down at the equator. And it's between the tropical and the and, and the polar systems. It's the interplay between these two systems that produce a lot of the weather patterns that we're seeing. So uh, how that ends up year to year, season to season really determines what's going to happen during the year. So I'm watching this now. We're sort of interseason. We're not, we're not, we're no longer in summer. Uh, we're heading towards uh, winter. So they, uh, the Chinese call this mid-autumn, but uh, I don't know necessarily if it's mid-autumn. But uh, we are certainly heading towards autumn. We're heading towards the autumnal equinox. And um, we'll kind of have to sort of see where things go from here. Anyways, uh, I'll see you in the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory's BTS vlog. All right, take it easy. Well, I didn't intend to, but I started recording, so it's time for the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory's BTS vlog. I just finished recording uh, the intro to the Or vlog. It is now just about uh, ten, uh, no, it's thirteen minutes into the day of. Uh, Thursday, August 25th, 2016. And I'm gonna, I was going to go inside now and, and just sort of uh, go and eat, but I decided not to because I checked the weather forecast. They're calling for thunderstorms uh, around 1 o'clock in the morning. That's when I had predicted that, that they would be in here. But the thing is, is that the system that initially brought in the thunderstorms is gone. Uh, and the question is, is there still going to be a thunderstorm? Uh, they have a 51% chance of a thunderstorm at uh, at uh, one o'clock in the morning, between one and three, uh, and so we'll see what it happens. We'll sort of test and see is the uh, weather forecast right or is it going to be wrong. I mean, at 50%, that's not exactly uh, <laughs> you know high accuracy. This is kind of like flipping a coin. Well, there might be or might not be a, a thunderstorm at one o'clock in the morning. So the question is, you know, is there going to be a thunderstorm at one o'clock in the morning? What rolls in? What, you know, what does it look like? And then I'll, after the, the thunder, if the thunderstorm rolls in around one o'clock, then I'll go inside, check the satellite, and, and I think that will be it for the night. So, but anyways, uh, even though they say the temperature is dropping, the, it's still rather hot out here. There's a, there is a cold breeze. But uh, not much of a cold breeze, so... Yeah. This is uh, observation... Uh, 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 how observation goes, you know. Uh, I've noticed that I've noticed if you say, well, you just look at the uh, Weather Channel and they'll tell you what's going on. Well, Weather Channel, if, you, if you've watched it carefully enough, you'll find how often they're wrong. 
And the question is, well, okay, well, if they're so wrong, what's actually going on in the atmosphere? This is where you step outside and, okay, let's see what's actually going on. And um, it's a lot more complex than uh, you... than one would initially assume it to be. So, anyways, uh, I think I'm going to leave that here for now. The, that's sort of the segment of the vlog that was accidental. I was going to shut the camera down, but then ended up hitting the record button with a mistake, so... <laughs> Here we are. Anyways, I'll see you probably... Uh, maybe 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it's... Uh, that'll, be th that'll be 3 hours from now. The wind's picking up. There is a bit of wind picking up, so... Who, who knows? We'll see what happens tonight. Alright, take it easy. Well, I think I'll take a few minutes and, uh get a vlog done. Uh, oh. Welcome back to the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory RL's uh, BTS vlog. Yeah. Uh, it is um, 9 hours and 26 minutes into the day of uh, Thursday, August 25th. It was yesterday was the 24th. I did that calculation. Did that uh, sort of, not really calculation, but yeah, well, figuring out what day it was uh, yesterday, well, and uh, a, a couple segments ago, I kind of had forgotten what, what day it was, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, it's not that I'm getting up, because uh, I didn't go to bed till like, like 3 o'clock in the morning, 3.30, that was time frame there. Uh, I got most of the schedule done. It's now just that I have to improve the schedule. And then, you know, it, it, as I said before, it's like being an infinite tween. Uh, you're going back, it's like being in middle school for life, and this is the beginning of the school year. And this is when you start, you know, you get your schedule, you figure out what stuff, but what, what you're going to. Study where you're what 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 the subjects are that you're going to be studying. And you sort of begin your school year. In the beginning of the school year, you're kind of feeling around. You're not used to everything. And it's kind of, to some degree, a new ball game because uh, everything is really brand new. And the thing is, you, you don't always, you're not comfortable with everything. So there is uh, lags in the schedule, there's uh, things you drop, things you miss, uh, and there needs to be, if you will, an adjustment to the schedule. And usually by mid-September, uh, you're fully adjusted and you're now used to the schedule and you're working at it like a, like, a, like like you're sort of, I'm not really an expert, but you know, that you're 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 all right with it. You're not having the problems that you did in the beginning, and this is sort of the situation that I'm in now. I set the new schedule. I have an idea of what I want to do for the year. This is sort of uh, a uh, a rough outline. I got to make sure I get the space done, and then of course you know if things go well enough, I can add more things in. You know, it really depends on uh, how well I adjust this this uh, the schedule. Uh, these projects are not small projects; they're very large projects. Uh, Mars Alpha is going to be a year long project. Um, the or the or uh, or research projects, the atmospheric physics, re <clears throat> the or atmospheric research project is going to be year long. Um, and it's going to be like this for the next couple of years. Uh, it's, I think it's going to be uh, a three-year project. Uh, the one that I'm working on now, this is, is, is going to take that long to really sort of uh, measure out. I'm at a new level where uh, uh, more in-depth work has to be done. I have to tighten the focus a little bit, a bit more. Uh, the general survey that I had initially done is now done. And now it's time to get into more specific. But as I get into the more, more, the more specific, the the field hasn't shrunk. The field, in terms of the options, have grown. So in many ways, even though I've moved up a level uh, from the initial general survey, the 
number of options, a number of things they have to go through to under sort of sort of uh, 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 become familiarized with has grown, not shrunk. So I said this before. Even though you know, this is the way it is in science, uh, in, you know, in, in exploration research, when you finish a project and you've answered a certain set of questions that you initially set out to answer and, um, uh, when you began the project, you know, feeling like you know because you're going in completely new, you ask your initial questions. And then when you finish, then the year you f you finish answering the questions, so you go to the next year, the next level, and you actually have new questions. But the thing is, and based on the research you did before, but there are more questions now than when you when, when than you actually have answers. In other words, the the level of difficulty, the hasn't changed at all. In other words, even though you've moved up a level, you're still within middle school because the amount of understanding that you have is still quite minute and so the next step is still well within middle school because it's that much larger and the thing is this is what continues it doesn't matter you can be in science well I have been in science now for 25 years doing exploration for 25 years I haven't moved out of middle school I don't know if any scientist who can will ever stand up and say I am an expert I know everything most scientists who've done this amount of research or have gone as far as, you know, have done a lifetime of research, done a lifetime of research, lifetime of research, will turn around and say, I've done nothing. In comparison to what there is to know, the total sum of what there is to know, you can spend an entire lifetime doing research and still just be scratching the surface and still have that middle school understanding of what is actually going on. And this is sort of reflected in the understanding of, of the universe itself. Well, consider this, you know, they had the equations of the universe. They thought they knew everything. Right? Because they came up with the equations of the universe. They, you know, the, the model of them, they had the, 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 uh, the, the fastest computers. And they had supercomputers and they were sort of building their stuff up. So they could do more and more, you know, more and more research. And their models were somewhat getting better. And so they put the equations into the into the into the computer and try to figure out how you know a galaxy is built, how is how these galaxies stay together, you know, try to create in the computer a simulation, a model of the universe. Well, they put their well they thought the equations were incorrectly. They put it in and nothing worked properly. So well, maybe there's something missing. So they started adding stuff in. And what they added, added in is start adding in some basically energy in the, uh, the and when you add in energy you have to add add in mass as well. Every time that's e equals M C squared. This is what was uh, found by Einstein. Is that there was an there is a a very strong relationship between energy and matter, energy and mass, and this is what equals, equals mc squared. Energy is the mass uh, times the speed of light squared. That's what it is. So uh, that's how they began to fudge the equation. They began to increase uh, uh, some of the mass and some of the energy. Well, they soon realized they had to add in it in separate from everything else. And because they couldn't see this energy in the, in this matter, they call it dark matter, unseen. They increased it, they increased it, they increased it. The final amount that seemed to work, and seems to work now, is 95%. In other words, in order to get their equations to work, the, the equations are what you know of the universe. This is your understanding of the universe. Their understanding of the universe, at the beginning, they thought was 100%. They thought they understood this of the universe. By the time they finished their work on the, mo on, on the model, the understanding of the universe, of the known universe, was now 5%. And the unknown universe, the dark universe, is 95%. 
this sounds a lot like middle school to me. So, you know, your the percentage of what you actually know compared to the total is is significantly small. It's within that five percent range. There's so much, there's that much more to know. And this tells you that that as you start to study the universe, that you're going to basically be in middle school for life, and that's what it is. This the research, the studying. And that's what it is. It's studying. It's it's homework year round. Uh, you're in middle school for life, and there are periods of times where you feel like you're starting the school year over again, or you're starting a new class or a new course. Right? Sometimes things are broken up into semesters, and other times, uh, you know. You're uh, chugging along, doing your homework at a regular pace. You're, you're, you're getting used to it. And a lot of times when I feel when I'm getting used to something that uh, things are wrong because I'm getting used to it. Uh, you always, if you want to be pushing yourself to the edge, you're always going to be pushing yourself into that situation where you're not so comfortable. And that's when I start getting the situation where things have become normalized and, yeah, I'm working at a good pace. i got to sort of push it up a little bit and say, okay, Let's uh, push this a little further and let's add something new in. So another, a new sub-project, let's put another aspect to it and push back into the situation where I feel like I'm at the beginning of school again, where there's something new to understand, something new to work on, and something new to work into the schedule. And that's kind of the way things go. You, you, and this, this is the growth process. This is the leveling up process. This is going from one grade to the next grade or adding in new uh, uh, projects, new subjects in the semester. And if you want to look at it from this perspective of, of middle school. So, anyways, I'm going back to bed now. This is uh, getting up to refuel. Uh, I had something to drink. Uh, more uh, iced tea, the milk tea. Uh, I got a new batch now, so... Just brewed another, another batch last night, so... Oh, happy with that. So, uh, I'm going to leave this here for now, and I will see you in the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theorel's uh, BTS vlog. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the uh, next segment of Big Bang Theorel's BTS vlog. That's right. Uh, let me give you a time and day stamp. It is uh, 23 hours and 5 minutes into the day of... Uh, Thursday, August 25th, 2016. And I'll decide vlogging because uh, I'm at my observation, observation post for uh, the Ore uh, Atmospheric Research Project. And I'm watching the sky, sort of, sort of see what the temperature is, let's see what systems are coming in. I've, I've got good information from the satellite. I've got actually the, the view that I have now with about 10 different uh, perspectives. Uh, from the GO satellite really gives me a good feel for what's going on and I can con confirm from below what I see from above so uh, that's what I'm doing out here I want to see and all I want to see I want to see the uh, I'm looking for is I'm looking for the change when the changeovers are occur uh, do they occur at the same time is there are, 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 is there a sort of a, a correlation between night and day or is there is there a correlation correlation between uh, dawn and uh, uh, dawn and sunset you know do these things make a difference? Do they not make a difference? Uh, these are the th sort of the questions that, uh, that I'll be sort of trying to answer uh, as uh, we go along, um, uh, basically day by day, week by week, month by month, and then of course year by year, because you have to follow us along throughout all the seasons and uh, see if there's actually a pattern there, and that we sort of give you an idea of, of what. Uh, uh, what the possible difference between daylight and, and nighttime is in terms of uh, overall temperature, overall um, effect on the atmosphere above, and that's sort of you know that's why you have to sit, you to do these observations. You have to sit out and sort of you know four hour chunks, five hour chunks. So I'm doing now from basically about uh, ten o'clock in the evening till uh, just about two o'clock in the morning. I mean, last night I was out till about two o'clock in the morning. And that's when the uh, uh, the rainstorm came. They had been predicting thunder showers, but no thunder showers, um, no thunderstorms. It was just a, a light shower that that, that, that was th ended up being throughout most of the day. 
and the reason why I didn't see it on the satellite, I saw a bit of it on the satellite, is that it was a completely new system. The old system had disappeared and a new system popped up uh, right just a little south of Lake Huron. And so it, it, this, thing, this thing sort of popped up out of Lake Huron. It was fed by a stream coming in from the uh, southwest, but uh, overall it was just something that was just sort of popped out. It, it, it appeared out of nowhere. And this is sort of what you see sometimes, as you see, as, you, as, you, as, you, as you're looking at the systems. You'll see one system completely disappear, and all of a sudden something new pops up, and uh, there's a new system ahead. And uh, this is something that uh, uh, of, of, uh, I noticed this last year to a certain degree, but I'm noticing more to this year uh, 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 that it's actually happening more. And so now that's something I've got to follow, I've got to sort of track it all. And I've actually got the good, the good change of it. You can actually see it in the frame by frame, in the uh, clips I'm taking. You can actually see it in a frame by frame. You can see one system completely disappear and another system automatically pop up in its place. Out of nowhere, and this is this this is sort of the question here: is well, why is this happening? Why does why does the system pop out of nowhere? You can understand a system, you know, losing its energy, losing its moisture, and then disappearing, but a new system coming in immediately uh, out of nowhere and, and and taking its place. Anyways, <laughs> I think this, is, this is what's interesting here. It's, it's, it's a little rough uh, getting adjusted to the schedule, but it's going to take me. Yeah, uh, until about uh, mid-September to really get used to the uh, work schedule to get everything done, to make sure that everything gets I into its proper place. So, but otherwise, in the meantime, it's sort of sitting out here waiting for something to happen. Right now, it's hot and muggy. Even though the temperature's dropping a little bit, there's a temperature from the north uh, northwest coming in. Uh, there's a, 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 a wet, uh, wind from the uh, northwest coming in. It's a little cool. But it's not actually dropping the humidity that much. Ironically enough, the Weather Channel, the uh, the service, uh, doesn't show the uh, uh, drop in humidity. Doesn't show the humidity levels. It has the humidity levels at, at a much lower level than uh, it should be at. So, uh, anyways, uh, I will uh, talk to you again in the next segment. Uh, and I think we're, this is going to be kind of playing up here because I haven't done the editing yet on the. Um, for the last uh, episode. The ep last episode is still in the editing bay. So are some of the clips here. I'm starting to empty the clips out just about on a daily basis. So the clips are piling up uh, in the editing bay. And i got to get some do some editing tonight so uh, to get the uh, next episode out. So anyways, I will uh, talk to you guys in the next segment. Democratic Earth. Earth.